Good morning, everyone. My name is Richard Weinberg, and I have the privilege of serving as the rector of St. Margaret's Episcopal Church here in Washington, D.C. I'm joining this morning from the St. Margaret's Rectory, my home office. Uh, and I'll tell you one thing that's different this Trinity Sunday, which uh, also happens to be Memorial Day weekend compared with uh, 2020. We're all maybe not in DC, and yet we're gathered together in this virtual space. Um, I've seen a note that uh, to John, our virtual verger, it seems people are unable to turn their cameras on. But I wanna welcome you all to this service of morning prayer. As we gather on Trinity Sunday, our church acknowledges the diversity um, within the unity of our triune God, source of all being, incarnate word, and Holy Spirit. And as the people of St. Margaret's, we acknowledge each and every time that we gather that our worship is what it is because of those of us who are present. Your presence is a gift to us, and we thank you for it. Today, our new seminarian, Will Drossos, uh, will be offering the sermon uh, Will comes from Candler School of Theology at Emory University, will be with us uh, throughout this summer. He began last week, so if you uh, didn't get a chance to meet him, you'll be able to hear from him today in the proverbial pulpit. Um, at St. Margaret's too, we'll say more about this during the announcements. We are preparing to reopen our historic sanctuary for in-person worship. Uh, so today is the penultimate uh, offering of morning prayer on Zoom. As we begin, I invite you to collect yourselves in a moment of silence, perhaps uncross your legs and feel the seat underneath you, breathing in God's spirit whose presence is as close as your next breath. Let us worship God in the beauty of holiness. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, for you live and reign one God in three persons forever and ever. 
Amen. Ascribe to God, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to God glory and strength. Ascribe due honor to God's holy name. Worship the Most High in the beauty of holiness. The voice of God is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. God is upon the mighty waters. The voice of God is a powerful voice. The voice of God is a voice of splendor. The voice of God breaks the cedar trees. God breaks the cedars of Lebanon. God makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of God splits the flames of fire. The voice of God shakes the wilderness. God shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of God makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Holy One, all are crying, Glory. God sits enthroned above the flood, enthroned forevermore. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give the people the blessing of peace. Glory to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of their robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above them, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of their glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a person of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the Almighty, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Sometimes an event or a moment that is seemingly ordinary opens our hearts to the presence of God in such a sudden way that it feels like a hot coal is being pressed into us. That was my experience one day a few years ago. Throughout my schooling at a conservative evangelical Christian school, I heard God followed by he far too many times, and my heart became calloused to any experience of the divine. I heard God loves you, but this suffering is part of his plan for you. God cares for you. He just can't tolerate that kind of sin. 
And so when I went to college, I continued to go through the motions and church spaces. And as I explored different worship spaces, I finally stumbled upon the Presbyterian Student Center at the University of Georgia. There was a church service there and I was going through the motions again. But at the blessing, the minister, Andy, concluded the service and he said to all of us, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make her face to shine upon you and give you peace. And in that moment, my calloused heart broke open and I could finally and truly see God. Isaiah says, here am I, send me. Or here I am, God, send me to do your work in the world. And this may be the only part of the reading that makes sense to us, because frankly, the rest of it is a little bit strange. Isaiah sees God in what appears to be a mystical vision, complete with flying seraphs and a burning hot coal being touched to his mouth. This passage could be easily could be easy to dismiss because of its confusing nature. But I think these verses from Isaiah 6 reveal something about each of our journeys. At first, Isaiah is not ready to say to God, send me. And if I am honest, I often find myself unprepared to say to God, send me to do your work in the world. While most of us have never had an otherworldly vision of God in the same fashion as Isaiah, I still believe that most of us have encountered the divine and have seen God at work in our world. I think that the realization of witnessing God is what prepares us to do God's work, just like it pre prepared Isaiah. This idea of a vision of God can be hard for us as Episcopalians because we're such a rationally minded church, which is a great thing. And yet crucial to our theology and crucial to our limited understanding of the Trinity for whom this Sunday is named, is the idea that when we encounter God, we encounter something mysterious and beyond our comprehension. In God, we meet something completely transcendent and yet imminent and intimate to us in personal ways. And so I hope that when we read about Isaiah seeing God in this mystical way, our minds return to the way God's mysterious presence has become known to us in our own lives. When have you seen God in a way that was beyond the logical and somehow struck a chord in the depths of your heart? Put another way, when has the love of God moved you so deeply that even just for one second, you knew that nothing could separate you from God's infinite love? There's no one way that each of us sees God. Instead, God constantly interrupts the ordinary in order to make God's self known to us. You could have been in a time of trouble and uncertainty. And when you were at the end of your rope, suddenly and surprisingly, you were comforted. You could have seen God when you witnessed nature as if for the first time, noticing the blooming cherry blossoms or hiking to a mountain vista. Some of you may have experienced God in a time of great loss, when in that loss, if only for a moment, there was a feeling that God was holding you. Sometimes, if you are anything like me, you have no idea what you are doing or where the path you are on is leading. And yet, for a second, you feel completely at ease because you know that you are not lost and not alone. Maybe upon the return to St. Margaret's physical building, a place where many of you have seen God, the face of a friend in person who you have not seen for a long time will stir up something inside of you. Maybe the worship in this community, which is committed to inclusive language, will break your heart open as my heart was broken open. Often for me, I see God when I encounter a friend or a loved one who makes me feel deeply known or who cares for me in ways that I don't feel I deserve. All of these things, all of our collective depth of experience shows the breadth of ways in which we see the face of God. Paul says that in this life, we see as if through a glass darkly. And I know that's true for me most of the time. Yet our reading proclaims the whole earth is full of God's glory. 
a glimpse of God is around the corner for all of us because God is present in all that surrounds us and God's spirit is always moving. And in a moment, in an unexpected experience of the divine, God's love surrounds us in a way that we can't fully comprehend and in a way that moves us. And this inner movement in response to God's love is exactly what Isaiah experienced. As we so often are, he was caught up in worry about his own worth. Upon seeing God, he said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. I am lost. I don't deserve to be in God's presence because I am too sinful, too broken, too insecure, too irreverent, too unworthy. Some of us can relate to this feeling. And the next thing out of Isaiah's mouth is that not only is he unworthy, but the people who he lives among are unworthy. And I know that we can relate to this because the people we live among are full of the corporate sin Richard talked about last week. We see that there is a new mass shooting so often that we become numbed in expectation of yet another one. We see the systems of racism, sexism, classism, and homophobia that not only still exist, but also have entrenched and lasting power in our country. Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a person of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. But I want you to pay attention to God's response because the response from God is one of love and forgiveness. And that is how we know in our own experiences that we have seen God. When something sets your heart on fire and the source is love and forgiveness, that is how you know that you have seen God. Isaiah says, I have seen the Lord and a seraph touches a live coal to his mouth and on behalf of God says, you are forgiven, your sin is gone. As each of us beholds God, The triune God says to us, your sins are forgiven. And we are welcomed into God's presence and our hearts, which are so often calloused, are broken and opened. And if we allow ourselves, we can rest in this presence of God, in this infinite love, which is present to us around every corner, if we would only stop and notice it. We can rest in our God who is always making herself known to us. God will ask, who shall I send to do my work? And when we are ready, we can answer, here I am. Send me. Amen. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male, female, non-binary, and two-spirit. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah, praise God that our sins are forgiven. Hallelujah, praise God that we are here and God sends us to do God's work. Friends, God is always more ready to give than we can either ask or receive. As we come to God in prayer this time, we give thanks for Will's sermon Give thanks for those ways that our hearts have been broken open by our loving and merciful God. 
We invite your own prayers and thanksgivings at this time in the chat box. Friends, for whom and for what do we pray today? And for what do we give God thanks this day? We pray for the soul of Jack Rogers and for his family and friends who mourn his unexpected passing. We pray in Thanksgiving for Martha's sister, Susan, who celebrates her birthday today. For David's friend, Sean, who's in hospital with COVID. We pray for all those who are on St. Margaret's prayer list those in need of healing in mind, body, spirit, or relationship, those who have died, including Andrew and Roberta. Pray for all public servants. Pray for the nine souls lost from gun violence at the Santa Clara Valley Transportation Authority. For Pedro's friend, Edna, who's battling cancer. For Maggie's cousin's newly born daughter, Rhea, we give thanks. For Kathleen, for John and Dan's neighbor, Bill, at GW Hospital, and for his husband, Charles. For Linda's son, Mark, who's suffering from both physical and emotional issues. For all victims of gun violence and their families. We give thanks for the rain that nourishes God's creation. the soul of Millie and the Hall family, for Elizabeth battling cancer, for all submariners past and present, memory of Pat's mom and Ashley's grandmother who died two years ago, for Joe recovering from cataract surgery, for family and friends who support us when we lose our faith or our sanity. For Joe, a dear friend's brother, declining from cancer. Give thanks for Will and St. Margaret's clergy and community. For all those who grieve the death of loved ones for our lawmakers that they may open their hearts to see truth and pass laws to make our world a safer and more compassionate place. Pray in memory of Lou's dad. For all who wait expectantly for God, for all without food or shelter, Pray for all who died for our country this Memorial Day weekend. Continuing in a spirit of prayer, we pause now to offer back to God something of the abundance that God has granted each of us. As an expression of that abundance, offering back to God through the work of St. Margaret's, which for many years has been about proclaiming gospel justice in this broken world and serving others, especially our hungry and homeless neighbors in Christ's name, being an inclusive and diverse worshiping community. Uh, we need your support to keep this mission going. We thank you for your continued generosity to support St. Margaret's mission. There are many ways to give, which appear on your screen, either by text message, uh, through a secure and quick online giving form, which does not require you to log in to any account. Um, and of course, you may mail checks to our office at Connecticut Avenue. Silence filled the formless night, and worlds are 
that remain in the silence of our hearts, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Mother. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greetings and welcome to St. Margaret's in Washington, DC. Whether you're new to St. Margaret's or you worship with us regularly, we'd like to be in touch with you. So if you haven't yet gotten in touch with St. Margaret's, you can join our mailing list Send us an email with your name and contact info at, to office at stmargaretsdc.org. You can like us on Facebook. You can send us your prayer requests to office at stmargaretsdc.org. And of course, please do stay for our virtual coffee hour after today's service and get to know some of us. And now I think we have a few announcements from our rector, Richard Weinberg. Thank you, John. I want to make sure that everyone gathered here today has not missed the announcement, um, but of course, if you're joining us uh, for among the first few times, want to make sure that everyone understands uh, what's in store for the weeks ahead. Um, next week, we will gather again um, on Zoom in the way that we've done today uh, for our final service of morning prayer. We have been, uh, with a few exceptions, uh, worshiping without, the, without Holy Eucharist for about a year now. Um, and we've been doing that principally on Zoom. Uh, uh, we've recently announced that on Sunday, June 13th, our church will reopen for in-person worship. Um, uh, and that particular Sunday, we will resume a weekly service of Holy Eucharist. Uh, this is a joyous uh, thing that uh, many of us are highly anticipating. 
But I also acknowledge that it is a complex time in which not all of us necessarily is equally excited um, about this option. Uh, we will continue to provide an opportunity for you to worship online uh, by staying connected through a live stream of the service. Um, and this is going to be a season of experimentation. Uh, just like when we introduced the practice of morning prayer, worshiping on Zoom, it was not perfect the very first week. It took time to figure out um, a new normal. And for better or worse, uh, as we emerge from COVID-19 pandemic, as increasing percentage of the population is vaccinated, um, it's going to take time again in a season of learning what new normal is in store. What we learn through the pandemic is that there are two essential things that St. Margaret's is about, connecting with and caring for one another. And those two things continue. In whatever different ways we discern to do it, in the coming weeks on Sunday, June 13th. I look forward to seeing so many of you in person and know that there'll be an option to participate online. Uh, excuse me, I'm just having this like horrible moment of allergies and cannot breathe. <coughs> Sorry. I also wanna mention um, that uh, to make our reopening possible is going to require uh, the support and, and work of countless volunteers like pre-pandemic, we have opportunities to be of service to help make and lead our worship. Um, the roles of usher, those who read the Bible lessons, those who pray. Um, and uh, for now, we will only be serving communion in one kind through wafers. Uh, so we will not be needing people to serve a chalice immediately. Um, but there are behind the scenes roles too. We need people to learn how to operate uh, the cameras for our live stream. Um, we need people to help prepare our worship space, um, uh, which is principally done by our altar guild. Um, so on Friday, we sent out an announcement uh, for you to sign up to join us. Many of you have served in these kinds of roles previously, and it will be um, more seamless for you to re-enter those roles. Uh, John has just placed a link in the chat box, which is to a Google form, we're requiring that everyone um, sign up anew uh, because we are requiring that if you are in a volunteer role uh, that you be vaccinated. And so we just wanna capture that information in the Google form um, and know which roles you would like to serve in. And if you are new to any of these roles, there's an option for you to express your interest in the different roles on the form. Um, and we won't assign you immediately uh, and leave you without direction, um, but indicate your interests so that we can schedule training uh, for those who are interested in beginning new ministries um, in volunteer roles. Any questions about this, we can answer them later. You can email us. Um, we can chat about it during coffee hour too if anyone has any questions. Uh, over to Diana. Hey everybody, um, I am. I have two announcements. Uh, the first is to uh, say I'm really excited about a special forum uh, that we'll be holding on inclusive language in worship. That's going to take place after worship on June 13th. And we'll kick off a three month series we're calling Teach Us to Pray. Uh, so thank you, Will, for your beautiful rendering of the importance of uh, inclusive language in worship. Um, and our forum will touch not only on uh, she, but non-gender language and uh, the understanding of an all-inclusive uh, divinity. Our, we'll have three special speakers, uh, starting with uh, the Reverend Vienna Cobb Anderson, uh, the sixth rector of St. Margaret's, of course. Uh, also the Reverend Diane New, who is the co-founder of WATER, the Women's Alliance for Theology, Ethics and Ritual. And the Reverend Emma Chatton, who's the senior pa pastor of the Metropolitan Community Church of Northern Virginia, as well as the executive director of transgender education, of the Transgender Education Association of Greater Washington. So please put June 13th, fall 15, 
p.m. on your calendar and it's available both through Zoom and in live uh, presence. So you can be there on Zoom or in, uh, in person and we'll be sending out more information on how to do that. And then our second announcement, uh, we just sent an email out about this. Um, we are starting up a racial justice formation group and looking for people to join in the planning and launch of the sacred ground curriculum this autumn. You've probably heard of sacred ground. It's, it's become really, really popular um, in the Episcopal uh, world. Sacred Ground is a 10 session. We'll probably do it every other week. So it'll take place over 20 weeks. A 10 session film and readings based dialogue series uh, in which we talk about race. Uh, and it's, it's important um, distinction is that it's grounded on shared stories. So we share our own stories and it's grounded in faith. So, um, it's, it's not just sharing, it's, it's grounded in our sense of faith. Um, the members of this group will prepare as sacred ground facilitators and will also guide future race-based formation offerings. So please email me if you're interested in joining this planning group and helping facilitate in the fall. I will email address in the chat. Thank you, Diana. And we have some announcements from Annika as well. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. On June 12th, we are going to be doing Rock Creek Park cleanup. Um, we will be at two locations and we'll be doing this across two different times to make it the most convenient for everyone. The first time is at eight o'clock. We're gonna be meeting right near Pierce Mill. Um, there's a link in the Friday announcements that will show you on Google Maps exactly where we're talking about, but there's a small parking lot there. From there, we'll meet up. We will be providing both bags, gloves, and water. Um, that will go from about eight to 10 a.m. Then we're gonna have a second park cleanup time at a different location, a little bit further south. So starting at 10, 15, we're gonna be meeting up right where P Street essentially enters Rock Creek Park. There's a little bridge that goes over there um, and then you can go north or south towards the mall. Um, so we'll be meeting up there as well at 10, 15 until about noon, we'll be doing park cleanup there as well. Everybody is welcome. So please feel free to invite your friends, your family, um, roommates, anybody um, who would like to join us, they are more than welcome. Please just register so that we can make sure that we have enough water, gloves, bags, and that kind of thing at each site, and so that we can kind of factor in how many people will be at each place um, for the two different times. If you have any questions, I will also drop my email into the chat too, but John has already put in the link there where you can sign up for either time, but it is all going to be happening on June 12th, and any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Receive now, my friends, this blessing. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's incarnate word, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God, the one holy and undivided Trinity, be with you all and remain with you always. Amen.
Blessed Trinity Sunday to everyone. This concludes our service. I invite you to stay and greet each other. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you.